you, God. Good morning, progressive. I give honor to God who is truly the head of my life. I give honor to the first family in their absence, to all of my co-laborers in the gospel. I thank God for you, to all the deacons and the leaders and everyone in this church. I just give God praise for you. I thank God for my greatest achievements. I thank God for my husband and the prince of my city, my only son, Cameron. I thank God for the Wednesday night warriors that are so faithful that come out to Bible study. And I thank God for my sisters that came out to support and encourage me on this morning. I thank God for Sequoia, for Rhonda, for Jamie, for Joyce. It just does my heart good because I know if I don't get one amen from people, I got five sisters and a mother that's going to say amen. So I give honor to God for that. Give honor to Mother Shirley and for every role she's playing. This, this morning, turn with me to the book of Mark, the fifth chapter. And we're going to start at the 22nd verse. Say amen when you have it. And it starts by saying, and behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray that thee come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman had an issue of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not better, but she grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed from the plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole from thy plague. Well, you know, my question is always, are we ready to be transformed? You may be seated. Our text here in Mark 5 is very, 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 very familiar. Everyone is very familiar of this scripture. This is one of the stories that is most interesting because when we look at the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they are synoptic. So that means that they are telling the same story, but from their point of view. And when you read the Bible, every story is not in each book. But this particular story was so profound to almost all of them that almost all of them recorded it. Matthew recorded it in chapter 9 of his book and Luke recorded it in chapter 8 of his gospel. And we just read it from Mark chapter 5. A lot of people see this story as a faith story. And it is. But to me, it's a little different. And I know that most of you all who've heard me understand that I see things just a little different when I read the Lord just allow me to see something totally different. 
And I always go before God when I'm studying and I say, I don't know the story. So I'm always going as if it's something new. Because see, when we go read something we think we knew, we still miss the mysteries of God. So when we read the Bible, we really should read it as if it's something brand new to us. So when I read the story again, I said, yeah, it's a story of great faith. But to me, it's also a story of interruption. A story of flipping the script. Do we still say that? Or am I aging myself? We still say flip the script? Okay, okay. So it's a story of flipping the script. All right. And it's a story of promotion. The story starts with Jesus being in Capernaum. Capernaum was a little fishing village on the northern side of Galilee. Jesus and his disciples were on their way to a man named Jairus' house to heal Jairus' daughter. And in verse 24, it says, and Jesus went with him. So he was going with Jairus and a great crowd was following him and pressing him on every side. Now here comes the interruption. And out of nowhere, the next verse says, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years. Now, right here, we are with Jairus. Jesus is walking with Jairus. And now, from one verse to the next verse, this story, she interrupts. She say, oh, did y'all see that? It didn't stop Jairus. She just jumped right on in. And there was a woman. Ain't that what it read? All right, all right. So, and because of that, the title of this message today for those taking notes is if, man, I tell you, <laughs> Woo, I'm sorry because sometimes you think I'm preaching to you and sometimes I'm preaching to myself. So the title of this message is it don't have to be your turn for it to be your time. Father God, we come before you this morning asking you to breathe on your word and allow it to do what it always does. Allow it to cut, convict, and consume your people. Allow me to decrease that you may increase, and I'll be so careful to give your name all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so when we think about this entire story, the way she comes on the scene out of nowhere, she just turns up. It wasn't even her turn. Jesus was on his way to see Jairus' daughter. Right? It was Jairus' daughter's turn. Come on, y'all reading the same story? All right. It was her turn to receive from God. It was her turn to be healed. And all of a sudden, this woman with no name, no background, no record, no nothing about her, we don't know if she was married. We don't know if she had children. We don't know nothing. All we know is that she had an issue. And if we are honest, we all have some kind of issues. So because of that, we have to realize that we got family. So sometimes we got family issues and we got jobs and sometimes we have employment issues and even down to money. Some of us right now just got a little money issues. Either way it go. We waiting on God to move and to do something in our life one way or another. So in the midst of God coming to answer you, this woman was no different. She wanted God to see about her issues. All right. Her issues just lasted a little bit longer than she expected. How many of us can relate to that? Sometimes we got an issue and we be like, oh, it's just going to be a little minute. And then that little minute turned into a day and then that day turned to an hour and then that hour turned to some months and then that month turned into some years. And you be like, Lord, did you forget about my issue? That's what this woman was dealing with. She had, you know, it was so long she probably forgot when it started. She probably forgot how long she'd been praying about it. But all she know is that she was dealing with this issue. And some of us have been dealing with some issues so long the same way. We're just waiting for our turn. 
We waiting for God to do as people often remind us that he always does. We waiting on him to just show up and show out because we want our turn. When we look at the word turn in a sense of next, we want to be next. It rotates, it switches, it exchanges position. And it's so sad that we, even as God's children, have fallen into the thought process of thinking that the blessings and favor of God comes in sequence and we must take turns to get them. Really? As if God couldn't bless me and you at the same time. He's God. Come on, church. Remember, it don't have to be your turn for it to be your time. When it just is your turn, we're asking, see, because turns, when it's my turn, when we're standing in line and the lady ringing up, I think then it becomes the next person's turn. It just is a moment, a minute, a snippet, a flash. It's just a brief moment. But when it's our time, it's a season. It's a span. It's a lastingness. Your turn is but a moment, but when it's your time, it's a duration. It's a season. See, that's why you hear people say things like that painting is timeless. And we describe the seasons with time, springtime, summertime, wintertime. We've always heard these. And then, you know, when <laughs> I always say this, but it's kind of funny because I always say when you get married, you either going to get really saved or you just realize you just been really sentenced. All right, so I say, so when people hear you, they be like, oh, wait a minute now. Your love has withstood the test of time, all right? Because with time, there's always time. We got to remember, it don't have to be your turn for it to be your time. See, the woman with the issue had abruptly, suddenly, unexpectedly interrupted Jairus' daughter turn by coming on the scene in the middle of the scene. Jairus' daughter was next. It was her turn again to be healed. It was her turn for Jesus to touch her. Jairus had went specifically to Jesus and said, come on, my daughter lay and she is about to be dead. And Jesus said, come on, we on our way. But the woman flipped the script. She showed us something that we had never seen before. She showed us that we don't always have to wait for God to touch us. Come on, you didn't hear me. See, because we hear it all the time. And, oh, I'm just waiting on God to do this. And we just waiting on God to do that. But this woman decided that she wasn't going to wait any longer. See, because in the wait, we continue to replay the history. While we waiting, we continue to replay the situation and the circumstance and the issues that we're going through, through the way. But this woman said, I refuse to continue to replay and remind myself of the doctors that I've been to and the money that I've lost. And she understood that rewinding her situation over and over again in her head was doing nothing but becoming a distraction. It didn't change anything. All it did was fill her head with with distractions then the scripture says I like the way Matthew said it Matthew said remember now this is an amplified version and I understand you got iPads just go up there and flip to the different translations but Matthew said he said for she kept saying to herself see in one translation it just says she said to herself but Matthew said she kept saying to herself see that is one of the hints that we need to understand right here is where she started creating her time for her interruption see if you want to learn how to create a time when it's somebody else's turn she teaching you right here in the midst of somebody else's turn this is how you create it when the word of your mouth matches the word of God's mouth and when you're in the season of your life that meets the word in his mouth, it's your time. See, we really think that when people keep saying, you got to change what you say. As 
long as she thought about the doctors and thought about her money, nothing happened. It wasn't until she met her mouth to match God's words and then she changed her entire situation. She didn't even realize that she had started talking and then at the same time Jesus was walking, he changed her entire situation. Come on now, it don't have to be my turn. Come on Regina, it don't have to be my turn. But it can be my time. See, this woman didn't care who was next. This woman started declaring that it is my time. She didn't care about the laws of the land in that time because when you were in the situation where she was, you had to be kept away from people. So she had to really forget anything that mattered to the people at that time. She didn't care how many people were going to be there. Come on, some of us won't even move because somebody going to be there that we got a problem with. How bad do you want it? See, because she didn't care. We have to understand that she is giving us the prescription of how to interrupt and to get God to understand that it's me. See, because sometimes we think that, oh, God blessing you ain't nothing I can do. But that ain't true. She didn't care. Sometimes when we're <laughs> saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, we want to be nice. Get sick enough. You ain't going to be nice. Get tired enough. You ain't going to be nice. You're going to tell that devil, that's it. You're going to try something else when that something didn't work. You're going to have to start flipping the script. <laughs> she said, I don't care where you're supposed to be going, Jesus. I don't even care if in the beginning of this verse you didn't give me no name. And a woman. So I, I ain't interested in that. <laughs> I just know what I need. And what I need is in you. And if you don't come to me, I'm coming to you. <laughs> y'all better watch out for people who know that it's their time. See, because all of y'all that it's your turn right now, people going to realize it's their turn, but it's my time. And they're going to start flipping some scripts and you're going to be like, now, where she come from? Wait a minute. I know I was next. What? Hey, Kay, where you come from? She kept saying to herself why she still had the issues. So you missed that. Sometimes we let our issues get bigger than our words. <laughs> but all while she still had the issue, she kept saying, hmm, if I just touch. Uh-huh, blood, keep on flowing because I got a plan. If I just touch. Mm -hmm. See, she didn't wait for her issue to be gone. She kept declaring inside the issue. She kept saying with her words. And her words changed her position. See, faith will do that. Your faith in God will have God looking for you. Mm -hmm. It don't matter whose turn it is, it can be a time. See, if we look at verse 32, the amplified version says, still he, the he is Jesus, kept looking around to see who had done it. What did she do? She interrupted his schedule. So we don't understand that we can do some things that'll have Jesus looking for us. The Bible 
says he looked around to see who touched me. <laughs> see, she flipped the script. See, because we waiting on Jesus to come and do something for us. And she said, yep, I got this issue and I'm going through these things and I know that you told me to stay in the house and I know that you told me that I ain't supposed to be around people, but I am going to get mine right now. She pushed through the crowds. She moved and the disciples said, how you know somebody touched you with everybody pushing you? And guess what? She was, they were pushing, but she was pressing. See, there's a difference between a push and a press. Come on now. Come on. We're in the same story. <laughs> she flipped the script. She showed us that we don't have to wait for God to touch us. We can touch him. I, I know many people ain't heard that before. But the Bible tells us that true worshipers, God seeks. That means he looking for true worshipers. So if you want God to see you, then make your worship real. Come on. All right. Now I'm closing. All right. I'm going to close with this. And it changed her position because she got a promotion. Come on. I'm in the same story. See, Jesus acknowledged that he didn't do this one. He did. See, everybody think that every miracle Jesus did. He just acknowledged that he didn't do this one. Come on. See, he said, your faith has made thee whole. Your faith did this. I didn't touch you. I was on my way to Jairus' daughter and you decided to come and touch me and your faith made you whole. I had nothing to do with this. Jesus said but I didn't do this one I was on my way minding my business tending to my schedule and your faith touched me and made me look for you <laughs> your faith took virtue from me and here we go. And here we go. And here is the promotion. In verse 34, he said, daughter, your faith have made thee whole. Okay, Quayla, they missed it. I'm going to do it one more time. Verse 34 said, daughter, your faith have made thee whole. All right, Rhonda. They missed it. it. One more time. Uh One more time. You you, you see it? it. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. See, when she interrupted the story, she was just a woman with an issue. And once she flipped the script, it changed her position from woman to daughter. Y'all don't hear me. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. She got promoted. And her position changed. She interrupted in 25 and said a woman had a certain issue. But by the time she made it to him, interrupted his story, flipped the script, her position changed from woman to daughter. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. 
Come on, come on, you don't hear me. God see you, you don't hear me. Your issues can't do nothing with you. I'm telling you, God sees you and he cares. It's our time to understand that our history is not our story. See, it is history, but it's not his story about us. See, our issues come to move us toward God. We don't need to understand our seasons, you know, because this is the thing. We know it's spring, but it feels like winter. We know that it rains in the summer. Just because a circumstance change in the middle of your season don't mean your seasons change. Remember what Jesus said to Peter. Remember? He said, Peter, the devil wants to sift you like wheat. <laughs> he said, but I prayed for you. Didn't he say it? Then he said something that was really deep. <laughs> he did, didn't he? He said, I pray your faith don't fail you. He didn't say, I pray your flesh don't fail you. Because see, he knows we human and Peter was going to do it. But he prayed for his faith because he wanted Peter to know that once you did it, I want you to believe enough in me to come back to me. Come on. God is not interested in your perfection. He's interested in your progression. He's saying that even when you make a mistake, I know the mistake. I understand that, but I pray that your faith don't fail you. I pray that while you're in the middle of messing up, that you still know that I will make up the difference. We got to understand this thing. We have to understand that this Christian journey, this disciple walk, this thing, whatever you want to call it. We have to understand that there are mysteries in this thing that if you ever sit down and get them, because you can, because the Bible said if the gospel be hid, it's hid from the lost. You ain't the lost. You say you children of God, you ain't the lost. So it's not hid from you. <laughs> so today, I just decided to bring this story for everyone with an issue to understand that you ain't got to keep sitting waiting. Because you can do something. It don't matter who turn it is. It can actually be your time. Because see, you have to understand that at the end of this story, he said, your faith have made thee whole. He didn't just heal her. Well, her faith didn't just heal her. Her faith made her completely whole. See, because sometimes we get healed and there's a little residue that follows. But when we are created whole, it's a whole new thing. So the way that she pressed to him, she didn't leave from him the same. See, she pressed in on her knees and in between people, but she walked out standing and whole. When you are faced with your issue, it doesn't matter the way that you go in. It matters the way you come out. people of God we have to understand that it doesn't have to be your turn for it to be your time we have to understand that the promises of God are yes and amen and it doesn't matter how long we 
wait for them and it doesn't matter how long we move in. He has prayed that our faith does not fail us. Every eye closed and every head bowed. The doors of the church are open. I need for every hand to be lifted in a sense of worship to God. doors of the church are open for anyone who wants to interrupt the script for anyone who have decided that today they moving out they moving out of every aisle they moving out of every issue and they're coming to God just the way they are no mask no pretense just who you are 